bear with us while we get everything set up and while we wait for people to take their take their places and we will we will begin within a minute or two Oops. Likewise on YouTube, uh, we'll be starting in just a moment. Thanks. I hope everybody uh, who's watching can can see and hear us. If you can hear see and hear us, please raise your hands. We can't see you. Hey, somebody they raised your hands. Thank you, everybody. I, I forgot you can virtually raise your hand. Excellent. Thank you. That's good news. Well, good afternoon uh, from from rainy and dismal Belmont, Massachusetts. My name is Mark Mamagonian. I'm the director of academic affairs for the National Association for Armenian Studies and Research, Nasser. And on behalf of Nasser and uh, of the co-sponsor of today's program, the Mesrov Mashtots Institute of Ancient Manuscripts uh, in Yerevan, Armenia, widely and best known simply as the Matanadaran, welcome and thank you for taking time out of your weekend and perhaps uh, taking a break from the difficulties and tensions uh, of a very trying moment for uh, Armenia, for Armenians, for the world in general, and uh, take a little break to focus on on culture uh, rather than war and violence. So uh, we appreciate your being with us today. I'd like to just first make a couple of announcements of upcoming programs, which I hope people will be interested in, in attending as well. As always, I remind you that if you want to stay informed about Nasser's events and other activities, please get on our email list or follow us on social media, or visit our website, nasser.org, or do all of these things. And as always, I remind you that our work can only be done thanks to the financial support of our members and friends. So please continue to help us do our work and to strengthen Armenian studies around the world. So on Wednesday, March 23rd at 7 p.m., uh, Nasser is very happy to be partnering with the Armenian Center at Columbia University to present Pulitzer Prize winning poet Peter Balakian and Kathleen Osip presenting Balakian's new book of poems entitled No Sign. This is at 7 p.m. on March 23rd. On Saturday, March 26th, two weeks from today at 12 noon, we will present uh, Ruben Galician speaking on the ever-changing borders of Armenia in ancient and modern times, the cartographic re record. Uh, these are both webinar events. On Thursday, April 7th at 7.45 p.m., in collaboration with St. Leon Armenian Church in Fairlawn, New Jersey, and other groups, uh, Omer and Destina Kantik will present Restitution of Property in Turkey After 100 Years. This is a, a hybrid event in person at St. Leon Church and, and online via Zoom and YouTube. And uh, a little over a month from now, on Thursday, April 14th, Nasser and the Society for Armenian Studies will present Michael Pfeiffer presenting his new book, Kindred Voices, A Literary History of Medieval Anatolia. This will also be a webinar. So there's lots going on uh, over the next month and beyond, and uh, we hope you can continue to join us, and thank you for your continued interest in these programs. I would also like to mention that after two years, of doing programs solely in the online world, it's Nasser's intention to resume in-person events in, uh, at our center in Belmont, Mass, beginning in April and May, uh, hopefully successfully as hybrid events 
Uh, we now uh, have to exist in both worlds, the world of in-person and the world of online programming. And um, hope you can join us for those as well as they come into shape. Today's program is the first in what is envisioned as a series of programs. Uh, hopefully, really, uh, it could be an infinite series given the number of, of topics that could be done Colla as a collaboration between Nasser and the Montanadaran aimed at presenting to a wide audience the richness of the Montanadaran's holdings, its importance for scholars in a variety of disciplines, and its extraordinary work preserving Armenian cultural heritage, although not only Armenian, I should add, as I, as I think we will hear shortly. Although the importance of the Montanadaran is no secret to scholars and to specialists in Armenian studies, and it is, of course, visited by many tourists visiting Erevan, it seems nevertheless that the full scope of its value and importance may not be fully appreciated. One of the hallmarks of Nasser's work, I hope, uh, is collaboration. In fact, it is one of the only ways we can hope to accomplish anything. It is not a luxury, but rather a necessity. So we are really pleased and truly honored to work with one of the great institutions and cultural treasures of Armenia and of Armenians and of world culture. And to present the, the, the uh, Matanadaran today, we have Sona Baloyan, who is Senior International Relations Specialist at the Matanadaran, where she has worked, she just told me, uh, for nine years. She is in charge of coordinating the collaborations with various institutions and museums around the world, organizing international conferences, designing and implementing projects, and coordinating the educational programs of the Matanadaran. Uh, I invite you to submit questions using the Zoom Q&A function at the bottom of your screen, which we will address uh, as time permits following Sona's presentation. So with great pleasure, I invite Sona Baloyan now to speak. Sona. Hello, Mark. Thank you very much um, for your invitation. And uh, on behalf of all the team of the Matenadaran, I also want to tell that uh, we are very happy for this collaboration with Nasser, and we hope that in the future we will implement many interesting projects together. And I'm happy for this chance to present today um, an introduction presentation for all those who are not acquainted very well with the Matanadaran, uh, who doesn't know um, about our activities and what we do in general. So today I will give uh, the general information about our main activities and our collection. Um, so let's get started. Um, first of all, for those who don't know, Matanadaran, uh, this word means uh, library, depository of manuscripts. And uh, it is a unique research center uh, of uh, ancient manuscripts, one of the most important ones in the world, and the largest one of Armenian manuscripts. Uh, I will speak later uh, about the collections uh, today. Uh, for now, I want to introduce you the main building um, designed by architect Mark Grigorian. Um, this building was opened in 1959, but the history of the Matanadaran goes back to the 5th century, um, just after Mesirop Mashtot, uh, whose name the Institute carries, created the Armenian alphabet, and immediately after the creation of the Armenian alphabet in 405, laid the foundations of Armenian literature and translational activity, and the basis of the Matanadaran, which was then a depository adjacent to the Armenian Catholic Crusade um, in Vagashapat, uh, today's Sech Um Later, um, in 1939, the collection of uh, Mat Matanadaran was transferred to Yerevan, to the public library. And then the construction of the building began in 1945 and officially ended in 1957. And as a research institute, Matenadaran was opened in 1959. Um, then um, in 2011, a new building was uh, constructed and uh, opened 
and all the academic departments moved to there. And this building, the main one, um, was reorganized into a museum. So we can say that the Mata Nadaran is a research center, a library, a depository, and a museum. This is the new building where all the academic departments are located, also the depositories and uh, the administrative offices, etc. It is uh, five times larger than the previous one, which gave uh, opportunity to open new departments and also um, increase the number of our staff. So, um, as I've told you, the old building was completely transformed into a museum with more than 10 exhibition halls. And um, all so of no, we're the not seeing your halls... slides change. I'm sorry. Oh, to really? Yes. Uh, wait a minute. Do you see it now? No, we seem to be stuck on the initial. Oh, wait. Ah. Yeah, does it work? Yeah, if you, if you change it to the slideshow presentation. Uh... Do you see that I change it? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, so now you... it's the museum part, if uh, you see the same. I, I see the, the picture of four galleries. Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay. These are the galleries in the museum part. <laughs> We have permanent and temporary exhibitions because the collection of the Mata Nadaran is very large. So we very often organize temporary exhibitions, trying to show all the heritage that we preserve there. So speaking about the collections, um, uh, I want to start that um, the collection of the Mata Nadaran uh, was um, included in the memory of the world of uh, UNESCO's register in 1997 and uh, with its collection it became like one of the symbols of Armenia and uh, more than 20,000 Armenian and foreign manuscripts are kept in the Mata Nadaran. The large part of course are Armenian manuscripts around 12,000 plus uh, 3,000 and the rest are written in different languages in Arabic, Persian, Greek, Ethiopian, Syriac, Latin, etc. So uh, with our collection, it, collection, it's a place of um, intercultural, interreligious, interethnic dialogue. And uh, we see it um, also in our collaborations and the interest that different countries and nations uh, show towards our collections. Um, and especially because of the translational activity, which started just um, in the fifth century, um, we have many rare translations uh, because the original works of some of them haven't preserved in uh, their original languages. And now these works are known to the world uh, due to their Armenian translations. So now let me, um, let me interrupt once again. I'm sorry, we, we still seem yes. to be stuck. Uh, okay. If, if you go, um, if you click on the slideshow presentation mode. Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure. Now I'm showing the place, uh, the page with the collections of the Mata can, can, can you click on the icon at the bottom that will allow just the display of the slide only and not the uh, side images? Is it fine? Do you see the collections now? Yes. Um, okay. But we're still not in slideshow mode. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, but like I shared the screen. It's slideshow mode, but I don't know why you don't see it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is it okay now? Uh, for some do reason, you want, no. do you want you can share my presentation? Um, I will just sure. Tell you Let's try that. Yeah? Yes. Let's try uh, like this. Okay. 
All right, you unshare and I will share and then we'll. Okay. All right, everybody, we'll get this going. One moment. Uh, let me, let me try this again. Slideshow from beginning. Okay, you can put the fort. Wow. Uh, you can put the fourth slide and we will continue from this part. Okay, now I'm, I've thoroughly confused myself, Sona, so let me try this again. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Okay. All right, this is how we're gonna do it then. Somebody raise their hand if they can see the slideshow. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, very good. Please continue, Sona, I'm sorry. Everything is fine? Yes. So shall we continue? Yes, please continue. Okay, so... Um, so in general, um, Matanadaran is known mostly for its manuscript collection, but the uh, archival um, collection is also very rich. And it was again based on the uh, collection of Katolikoi based in Echmiadzin, Matanadaran. Today we have around 500,000 um, archival documents. Um, starting from the 14th century. Um, these are ecclesiastical documents, letters of Catholic Hoi or decrees. Um, and, um, and of course the library, which has around 3,500 um, old printed books and a very rich library uh, showing um, focused on armenological studies and mainly, mainly included the medieval period, of course. Regarding the content, um, most of the manuscripts and archival documents, of course, are of religious content. These are, you know, Bibles, uh, Gospels, uh, ritual books, missals, etc. But they also include, include almost all the fields of uh, science, um, including um, astronomy, grammar, law, philosophy, historiography, uh, medicine, etc. Um, so you can change the slide, uh, Mark. We can come uh, to the depository to the fifth to the fifth slide. The next one. Yes. So as the main goal of the Mata Nadaran is the, the preservation and safeguarding of its collections, in the new building, uh, we have three large, very well equipped depositories. This is one of them. There are uh, three such depositories, one uh, for manuscripts, the other for archival uh, documents, which you see now, and uh, the other for books. And they have all conditions like controlling the humidity, the light, um, in order the collections are kept properly. Uh, we can move to the sixth. I think that uh, during our future presentations, 
uh, we will have separate topics dedicated only to Armenian miniature painting, um, for which our manuscripts are known all over the world. Uh, but just today, I wanted to show you like the earliest preserved samples uh, of Armenian miniature art. Um, there are four miniatures uh, from the 6th or 7th centuries that were attached to 10th century Echmiatin Gospels, and they represent four scenes from the Christolog Christological cycle. These are the Annunciation to Mary, the Annunciation to Zacharias, and then um, in the next slide you will see two other scenes, the Baptism and the Adoration of the Magim. Uh, in the seventh slide. Um, and this is an evidence that already in the sixth or seventh century, uh, we already had a well-developed uh, miniature school. Uh, and so we don't have other preserved uh, miniatures from these early centuries, but this is already an evidence that we had uh, and had it in a quite developed way. So these manuscripts were attached to the HMS in Gospels, uh, which you will see in the next slide. Um, it's a 10th century gospel, but it is it has uh, a very interesting um, binding, ivory bindi binding, and the binding also belongs to the 6th or 7th century. And again, on it, you see different scenes from the Christological cycle. We can go to the ninth slide, um, where you will see um, our academic department. I think um, all those who joined us today, of course, there are people who are interested in Armenian studies and in medieval studies in particular. So. Uh, you can see what kind of departments, academic departments we have, and um, you can find ways um, how we can collaborate and where you can come and do your research because we are very open to um, scholars uh, and PhD students. Uh, we already, um, over these years, uh, hosted many PhD students who implemented their internship at the Matena Daran and worked in different departments um, or visiting scholars who are our great friends, like great arminologists in the world. So there are different departments focused both on Armenian and um, other studies um, based on the collection, of course, that we have. And um, in addition to the academic departments, uh, we have uh, very important departments. One of them is the restoration department. Um, restoration work is one of the essential uh, part of uh, the activity of the Mata uh, as our, As I've told you, our main goal is the preservation and safeguarding of our collections. And since our manuscripts have centuries old, life and they come from the depths of uh, the history. Of course, most of them are very damaged, have many uh, diseases, and um, they need very good um, restoration. So this work is endless. And I must say that uh, our restoration department is uh, one of the best in the region. And we have very high qualified uh, specialists, restorers, biologists who thoroughly um, treat the manuscripts and also the archival documents and books. They clean them, they um, uh, heal them, heal the, these fungal diseases and restore them. And sometimes like you can witness real miracles, how completely destroyed manuscripts turn into books. Um, and they work also based on uh, traditional techniques, traditional Armenian techniques, and combine them with uh, the already internationally adopted standards. Um, as I've told you, in our collection, we have many medicals, and sometimes there are written receipts how to treat manuscripts, how to heal them. And our restorers, our scholars, uh, studied them and often used these techniques on the in, also in restoration process. 
And in the next slide, you will see um, some works from the department. Um, very often we organize international trainings. Um, sometimes uh, we host um, restorers from other institutions uh, and our restorers train them and sometimes vice versa. It is our restorers who are being trained. So this exchange of skills and knowledge um, is very important as useful for uh, the development of this work. And we can go to the 12th slide to speak a little bit about digitization which is also one of the main um, activities. Um, it plays huge role in preserving uh, our collections because, you know, previously um, all the scholars and researchers used to study the original manuscripts and now due to digitization, uh, they already work on digital copies and only as a final step, if there is a need to see the originals, they already go to the depository and work with the original manuscript. And um, up to now, about 7,000 uh, manuscripts have been digitized from our collection, but this is an endless and ongoing work. And um, every day, like we receive new orders from scholars all over the world. And so this is an ongoing process. And besides just doing like, um, digitization, many interesting projects are also being implemented in this department. Uh, for example, one of the most interesting ones is uh, the project uh, on palimpsest. Palimpsest, these are uh, manuscripts with two layers. Um, you know, in ancient times, uh, because of the lack of uh, material, of parchment, uh, often the text was erased and these parchment leaves were washed and then a new text was um, added. And with our eyes, we can see what was initially written, but with some image processing, some special uh, programs, it's possible now to reveal the initial text and um, read what was written initially. And sometimes very interesting findings are, we, we have very interesting findings. Um, this project we implement with our German uh, colleagues uh, headed by Dr. Jost Giebert. Um, we can go to the 14th slide. Uh, to speak about our educational programs. Though, uh, before starting uh, to speak about our educational programs, I would like to say a couple of words also about our publishing activities. Um, Umat and um, was always on the top of those institutes who each year uh, publishes new monographs, albums, books, etc. And uh, now we already have a separate department, a publishing department, so these works are more coordinated and uh, organized. Um, and among all these books that we publish every year, uh, we have uh, two very important series. Uh, these are our, like monumental series of books. One of them is the catalog of Armenian manuscripts. Um, we have a department of uh, codicologists and they describe the manuscripts and make the cataloging. And uh, another series is uh, the series of uh, Armenian classical odors. And also we have our periodical um, called Ballet Bulletin of the Mata Nadaran. Um, and not only we publish there our researchers' works, but also when we're having international conferences, uh, the materials of these conferences are, are also being included. Um, so different scholars publish their articles in, in uh, our periodical too. Uh, so coming to educational programs, um, during the recent years, it one of the main goals um, of our activities uh, was also um, create and conduct um, permanent educational programs. 
And among them, there were courses of old languages, classes of miniature painting, of digital miniature painting, classes of design and miniature painting. Uh, the first one, the courses of old languages, uh, they, uh, they were forcing for our young researchers who work with manuscripts and of course, um, with ancient manuscripts written in Latin, Old Greek, in Grapar, in Classical Armenian. Um, so we decided to um, conduct these courses where our um, senior researchers would teach our younger generation um, the old languages. And we already um, successfully implemented two courses. One was the courses of Latin. Um, you will see in the next slide uh, photo from the classes. And uh, after Latin, we um, conducted a course of Old Greek. Um, and both these um, courses were very successful and useful for our young researchers. Uh, and we will, of course, continue it. Um, in the future. The um, miniature painting um, classes are mainly organized for kids and teenagers. Um, they are being implemented in the, in the studio of the Art of Illumination um, that we opened five years ago. And all these uh, uh, painting classes are being organized within the framework of this studio. Uh, we already had more than 80 um, kids, students, uh, and we are so happy that we can keep miniature painting alive. Uh, this is one of the main goals uh, to keep Armenian miniature art not only in the museums, uh, not as something that used to be in the past, but keep it alive. And due to our kids, we, re we realized that they are really interested in it and um, uh, now we have uh, several groups groups for children groups for teenagers uh, another group for those who are more involved in technology so we have also this uh, digital painting um, classes um, and we even already uh, managed to organize several exhibitions um, you can see in the following slides Um, Mark, you can go to the following slide. Yes, these are the works of the kids and you see how masterly they painted. And uh, we have a very good teacher um, who explains the peculiarities of Armenian miniature painting. And um, in addition to practical classes, we also organize lectures conducted by our uh, art historians, um, our uh, senior researchers of the Mat and Adaran. So there are both um, theoretical and practical um, classes. And of course, the kids, uh, every day they come uh, to the Mat and Adaran. Uh, so they are always in this atmosphere and they always see our new exhibitions. And I think that this is one of the most successful projects that we did in the last years. Um, we can move on. Yes, these are just photos from the classes. And in the next photo, you will see some exhibitions that we had like each year as a final result, uh, we organized uh, these exhibitions and um, um, the kids are really amazing. And also the group of digital uh, miniature paintings, uh, they are also very talented. For example, um, their um, final work was the preparation of a book album and we published a book um, of Nerses Nurhali that was compiled completely by the kids and we just did some minor changes and um, 
sent the book um, to the publishing house and it was hidden. Um, so they really were already able to compile a book. And um, of course, initially, these projects were designed for kids, but it turned out that their parents, grandparents, um, are also very much interested in Armenian miniature painting. So we have a group also for adults and um, we will see what, what kind of results they will show in the end. And let's move to our branch in Artsakh. Um, in 2015, uh, in Ganzasar, just next to the Ganzasar Monastery, we opened the branch of the Matanadaran called Matanadaran Ganzasar Scientific and Cultural Center. Um, and over these last years, um, we did many activities there. Not only like uh, we have a permanent exhibition uh, in the center, um, displaying the manuscripts created in Artsakh. Um, I must say that we, um, that around uh, hundred, even more than hundred manuscripts produced in Artsakh uh, have come down to us. And part of them are um, exhibited in the Madena Dranganzasar Center. Um, also the ones which were not produced there, but were kept there and reach us due to the fact that they were kept in Artsakh. And also it, it has a library, it has a conference hall, and uh, we implemented many book presentations and even international conferences there. Um, in um, 2020, in the 44 day Artsakh War, we had to evacuate the collection and bring it to Yerevan, to Madena Adelani Yerevan. And one of the exhibition halls um, was dedicated to the Artsakhan manuscripts. Um, it's still on display now, but um, uh, I should say that our center is also functioning and today uh, the exhibition is also open there uh, a little bit um, uh, with a little collection, but uh, it's still functioning and uh, it's open. Uh, and this is the wonderful Gansasar Monastery. Um, our branch was um, constructed just next to it because in the medieval period, all large uh, monasteries, they had uh, depositories, uh, scriptoria adjacent to them. And we kind of continued this tradition and um, constructed our branch just next to it. So I think as an introduction for those who um, weren't aware at all about the Matena Um This is it, uh, but I leave here our contact information. You can visit also our web page and uh, you can uh, contact us. I left here the contact information of the International Relations Office. And uh, if there are some students who would like to come and um, implement some period of their research at the Matena Dran, they can email us and um, we'll be happy to collaborate. So, thank you. Thank you, Sana, and, and really to everybody, the incredible people at the Matanadran who do the, the fantastic work there. Thank you to everyone there uh for doing all that you do uh we do have questions and uh i'm sure that they are not all about um my struggle with the powerpoint so uh let, let us <laughs> let us look at those um of course we will share with everyone the presentation and it's just the first one um within the framework of our collaboration we right. will do some specific uh, lectures as well dedicated dedicated just to one field of um, our activities, so. <laughs> and one commenter says it was wonderful and thank you so much for that comment. Uh, thank so, you for being here. So, so now a few years ago, uh, there were 
reports. This is a question from from one member of the audience. There were reports of items going uh, being removed or going missing from the Matanadaran uh, mm -hmm. at the hands of, of Turkish scholars. Is this correct? Incorrect? Or or what? Can no, you no, no, no. This is incorrect. Like the collection of the Matanadaran is more than safe. Uh, in our depositories and it's preserved by great specialists and uh, you can be completely calm that whatever enters the mother and other is being preserved in a proper way very good uh question is who are the figures by the entrance of the museum maybe i can get that image uh back up yeah I'm, of course i will try let me try that one moment <laughs> yes yeah, sure so, uh, of course, yeah, there are six figures, but before coming to these six figures, uh, uh, we have uh, the status of Mesrop Mashtots, uh, of Mesrop Mashtots and Kuryun, um, the genius of Armenian nation, Mesrop Mashtots, who created the alphabet, and his student Kuryun. And then uh, on the platform, the six figures who represent uh, the prominent figures of Armenian culture. These are uh, Mofses Horenanti, Ananya Shirakatsi, Frik uh, Mahitar Ghosh, uh, Toros Roslin, and uh, Grikor Tevatsi. So these enlightened scholars that we had. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, is the Matanadaran independent or uh, affiliated as part of the National Academy of Sciences in Armenia? No, no, it's independent. It's adjacent to the government, but it's not under any ministry or it's not part of the uh, Academy of Sciences. It's an independent research institute foundation. And regarding the, the Ganzasar uh, Matanadaran, yes. what is the current uh, situation uh, mm -hmm. post post war on uh, yeah. and, and is it is it safe under whose jurisdiction is it, etc. It's the branch of the Matanadaran, so it's under the jurisdiction of the directorship of the Matanadaran. Um, it's open now, uh, it's functioning. Um, of course, we sent their smaller collection. Um, there are many high quality uh, copies as well, just to be on display and to show uh, what kind of heritage we have. But for security reasons, of course, uh, most of the originals are kept in our depositories in Yerevan. And but just to clarify, I, I, yeah. I think there was a question about uh, the location of Ganzasar uh, relative to the the uh, under whose control right now is is Ganzasar under Armenian control yes. okay. yeah I, I assume that was the intent of the yes question. thank thank God it remained under our control uh the question from a researcher uh, wondering if the Matanadaran houses any print or visual materials and archives from the First Republic uh, and Soviet eras. Uh, yes, in our archival department, we have such collections. Um, of course, mainly um, the collections of the Matanadaran are from the medieval period because um, I think um, those regarding to the First Republic are in National Archive, not uh, in our archival department, but there are some materials and uh, they can write us and we will send a request to our archival department and uh, to provide more um, detailed information about what we have uh, on this period. Yes, I think it would be very interesting, actually, maybe this can be a, a topic of a future program. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, sure. when people think of the Matanadaran, they think of the amazing medieval manuscripts. They don't necessarily think of, of more modern era archival materials, but in fact, there are imp very important uh, yeah, more and, modern holdings. And of course, and you know, our collection grows. It's not uh, something that we have and this is it. Uh, every year we have new donations also from those individuals who have um, 
manuscripts in their families, they decide to donate it to the Mata Nadaran and also some uh, archives or some libraries. Um, during these recent years, our collection enriched a lot and we even have paintings, we even have uh, photographs. So, um, of course, it's mainly focused on medieval period, but um, due to new donations, um, it expands. And what what in general is is the uh, policy on uh, on obtaining or adding new materials to to the holdings? Mm -hmm. Well, um, of course, uh, whenever we find any manuscript which is kept um, in a not very appropriate conditions, or when uh, we find something in auctions, uh, we always um, ask our donors to be more active, and we do our best to bring all these manuscripts that we know to the Madena Deran because here they are well preserved. And um, in addition to the preservation, of course, when they are at the Madena Deran, they are being put into scientific circulation. So uh, we really, we re really being very happy when some individuals like uh, decide to donate their family relics uh, to us, and they become like friends of the Madena Deran. They receive special certificates and medals, uh, and uh, whenever they want, they can visit and see the manuscript. Um, but it's already being put into scientific circulation, and it's very important. It's a question from a researcher who also thanks you for for the help that you have personally provided to to him when when he has been at the Montanadaran. And the question is this: uh, When may we when may we look forward to the digitized manuscripts becoming available for viewing and studying online remotely uh, by by scholars? Yes, this is actually again one of our goals. It depends on many technical issues. Uh, now we're working on having a better server, uh, working on our web page. So I think we will put some of the manuscripts available online. But um, I want to say that whoever comes to the Matena Deran and does his daily research in our reading room, they can um, study this complete digital manuscripts in uh, in the screens in the computers that are located in the reading room and then they can order separate pages so whatever they need we, we can send them we can send them to them uh, of course having them available online it, it will make easier everything um, we're thinking about it and we work on it so i think soon we may have some news regarding this. I'm sure that will make a lot of people very happy. <laughs> sure. Uh, question is, prior to the pandemic, how many tourists visited on average uh, each year to the Matanadran? And and is there any yeah. foreign funding for, for the Institute? So um, before pandemic, uh, our monitoring statistics show that we had more than a uh, hundred thousand visitors per year and most of them were tourists of course it's like a first destination for all those who come to Yerevan and um, most of them are tourists but of course um, during the pandemic uh, this number <laughs> was uh, uh, reduced this number reduced and uh, now we see some um, uh, activity again. So I think uh, the monitoring of this year will show good results too. Uh, so in, in average, it's like 100,000 people per year. Um, concerning the fundings, um, of course, we like in our also in our department and in different departments, we work on designing uh, projects and try to find funds. And we have many like a great sponsors like the Gilbenkian Foundation, the AGBU, uh, Aurora Initiative, and many others uh, who always support our activities. Um, and as I've told you before starting the presentation, uh, we also UNESCO um, very often, like for five or six times, they uh, provided assistance, financial assistance to our projects. So we work on it every day. So there's a question or or comment, will there be 
well, are there Western Armenian language materials uh, in, in the Matanadaran? And, and perhaps that can also be, this is the suggestion, the focus of a future presentation. Can you tell us a little bit about what kinds of materials in Western Armenian that the, the Institute may have? Well, of course, of course, there are um, in our um, like uh, most of the archival documents, there are um, in Western Armenian. And uh, since our uh, library is very rich, uh, uh, we have many um, uh, armenological studies written in Western Armenian. Uh, so, yes, that's a lot. Um, that's a lot. And um, if they um, search for some specific uh, author or scholar, they can send this request and we will check whether we have these materials or not. Great. So uh, as a last question then, Sana, what, what are the, some of the major uh, initiatives of, of the, of the Matanadaran that are coming up in the next few months? Uh, anything you'd like to tell us about? Yeah, well, um, we work on several projects. Uh, first of all, this is about uh, the museum part of the Matanadaran. Uh, we want to uh, update it, and so we will organize several new exhibitions, um, um, and uh, we will um, announce about them. Uh, I don't want to tell now which, what exactly, but we will announce about them very soon. We already work on them. Uh, so we will have some new exhibitions. Um, we will uh, have soon uh, a virtual tour of the Matanadaran available online for all those. This is one of the projects that we did during the pandemic, of course. Right. Uh, yes, and all the museum will be available and um, the visitors, the online visitors can um, click on, uh, on the displayed exhibit and will find information about it. Uh, so the whole museum will be available. Um, and also we will have some new publications. Uh, one of them will be dedicated to the manuscript heritage of Artsakh and Utik, these two historical provinces of Greater Armenia. And this book will be in English, so we will share it with you too. I think um, uh, we will um, make it available also. The digital version will also be available online. Yeah. So. That's fantastic. We look forward yeah. to all those things. Uh, <laughs> Thank well, you. Well, then let me just summarize uh, the, the tone of many of the comments expressing their, their thanks to you for your presentation and, and also that many people uh, learned more about the, the scope of the collections and the work of the Matanadar. And so in that respect, we very much uh, accomplished what what we what we sought to do with this initial program, which which was really really outstanding, and and I thank you, Sona, and and again everyone at the Matanadran doing the outstanding work that goes on there every day. So we look forward to too, continuing our work together in the future, and uh, hopefully seeing seeing each other in person as well. So on behalf of the audience. Uh, and, and on behalf of Nasser and everyone, thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. And everyone, thank you. See you soon. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And thank you, Mark.